Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is a continuation in my Earth to Ganymede series. In the last video, uh, it's been a couple days since I recorded that, so I'm kind of trying to remember exactly where we left off. I remember I got interrupted there at the end and had to quit. Um, but that was okay because it was coming right up on the 30 minute mark anyway. But I can see here just by looking at the MFDs that we are uh, pretty close to Jupiter. We're 0 0.64, the gravitational influence. So we're not too far away. And we have a PEA of uh, negative 4,000 kilometers, so we're going to have to bring that out a bit. Uh, I also remember after looking at Transex here the last time, I wasn't completely sure what the best way to approach uh, Jupiter was going to be. So I contacted Dimitri, like I often do, <laughs> and he explained to me that in this particular case, uh, the old Earth effect isn't going to be the best way to approach Jupiter. Now, for those of you who might not be familiar with that term, the old Earth effect is basically where you get in really close to a target body. You want to get in as close as you can and it works out generally, well it works out always that you get maximum efficiency on your braking burn when you are traveling um, as fast as possible. But in this case, um, I believe basically that because Ganymede is far out away from Jupiter uh, compared to say Io, uh, you know Ganymede's out about 1,000, uh, about 1 million kilometers rather, so the velocity boost that we would get by getting in close to Jupiter is a bad thing. Um, and, and even though we would get a more efficient braking burn, it would still increase our velocity so much that by the time we got to Ganymede, we would be traveling so fast that we would require a huge um, you know, capture burn to get captured by Ganymede. So it works out in this case that uh, we're better off not doing that. So let's go ahead and set up a mid-course correction for, um, you know, for making a correction there. Now, it would have actually been better had, had I known that we shouldn't be doing an Oberth burn. It would, been, it would have been a lot better if I'd set up my approach to Jupiter to come out to, say, a thousand uh, or rather a million kilometers around Jupiter instead of, you know, way back in the beginning. You remember I was trying to set it up to get in really tight around Jupiter, but... Uh, we're still far enough away from Jupiter that it won't be extremely costly. And again, we are in the aero freighter, so fuel isn't really a concern. But still, I like to do things, um, you know, like to do things right if we can. All right, so let's uh, bring up Transex here. We got it on both sides, and we'll select Ganymede as our target. And while we're in view setup, we'll go, we'll go to scale to view and change that to target so that we can get a closer in look at what we're doing here. Okay, so bring up view maneuver. I guess it doesn't really matter which side we do that on, but I like doing the maneuver on this side. And we'll turn maneuver mode on and we'll start adjusting the variables. Now, obviously, this is going to be mostly outward. Uh, you know, we don't, if we did a prograde, retrograde, that wouldn't have the desired effect on raising our orbit out because we're in so close to Jupiter at this point. You know, we're within the strong gravitational influence. So we want to do mostly outward to uh, push our push our orbit out. So let's go over to outward and start adding in some outward. And you can see that's raising the orbit out. And I'll just show you what I'm talking about. In order to get the orbit out to the altitude of Ganymede, you know, we're looking just with just outward alone, we're looking at 740 uh, meters per second. And if I reset that and try it with prograde, you can see it'll be a lot more. You know, if we just try to add in positive prograde, you can see we're already at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 60. It's just a very uh, definitely not the way to go. So we definitely want outward here. All right, so add that back in, and I'm just kind of guesstimating at this point. We're going to, we want our, in order to have a, a slow, the slowest approach possible to Ganymede, we want to catch it 
out here you know at its orbital altitude so the first thing i'm doing is just kind of pushing my hypothetical out to the you know roughly to the orbit of ganymede now i'm going to switch variables and we'll see about bringing the plane down looks like we need to go the other way with it maybe oh, maybe not a little hard to say at this point because we're still so far away let's just go ahead and reset plane change for now and let's work first of all with a little bit more outward and prograde just to get this just to get this distance closed down a bit. So back to outward and just take away some of that outward. Now again, I want to keep my altitude out here, so I don't want to I don't want to bring outward down too much. Let me see if I can adjust the timing here with prograde now. See by adding in a bit of prograde, it's bringing these distances down. And I'll check the total delta V cost here before I commit to any of this, just to make sure that we're doing this right. Okay, there we got our closest approach down. And let's go back to outward for a second and just do a bit more adjusting. Okay, now pro uh, now plane change. That's the wrong way. It looks like we need to go this way with it. And we'll go forward on that side so we can view the encounter. Okay, so we're there. Now let's just kind of tweak our variables a little bit. First of all, let's go to view target. So that's going to be an 855 meter per second burn. Again, it would be quite a bit less than that if I had known that we weren't going to be doing the Oberth method. And, you know, I would it'd probably cost me just 100 meters a second instead of 855. But that's okay. It's a learning experience. All right, let's do an adjustment here. Oops, wrong. We're not in. There we go. Now, first of all, I just want to take the, make sure my focus PD is above the surface for a minute, just so I can see what my capture delta is. That's 4,400. And if we play around with the variables a little bit, we might be able to beat that, but we're, we're probably not going to be able to do any better because you can see we're coming in to Jupiter and we're catching Ganymede way out here on the outer edge and we're not slinging in close to Jupiter to do it. If we were coming in like this, say coming in here and then slinging around Jupiter like that and then catching Ganymede over here, we would end up getting a big velocity boost from Jupiter by the time we get over here and our capture delta would be, you know, nine or 10 or 12,000, it'd be, it'd be a pretty high number. So we're not doing that. We're coming in out here on the very outer edge of Jupiter and we're catching Ganymede out here without getting in close to Jupiter. So our capture delta should be, you know, that should be reasonable. And again, if we sit here for a very long time, we might be able to do some adjustments to bring down the capture delta, but I don't think we would really save much of anything. So I'm going to go ahead and commit to this burn. Let's go to uh, the date variable and let's reset it just to get everything current. And now let's go to view target. And this is mostly outward, so we should have... Rotation. So we should get the green X lined up just by that's prograde there and we want to rotate to the right. I'm just putting in a bit of time warp to speed up that rotation. And again, it's mostly outwards, so we're going to go to 90 and then we're going to have a little bit of up down pitch for the uh, plane change. Okay, we're basically at 90, so let's go ahead and kill rotate. And now let's see what we have to do still for the uh, for, to get the green X lined up. Just putting in a bit more rotation. Actually, let me check my direction here. It looks like we need to come in a bit because we do have some prograde in the mix, so it's not going to be we're not going to be rotated to exactly 90 because we do again we do have some prograde in there. A little bit of time warp to speed that up, and now the X is coming around. Yeah, 
And back to real time, and now kill rotation. Okay, now view over to maneuver, and we're just going to update everything here. I'll again, reset the date. Do an update there, and now we can see that our altitude's climbed a bit in the time that it's taken us to do rotation. And it's not significant, but we'll go ahead and just do a bit of an adjustment here to bring all that down. Uh, actually, something else I can take into consideration is my inclination. Uh, well, I guess actually it doesn't matter too much because the base isn't on the equator, and I don't believe uh, Ganymede has any type of an atmosphere, so we don't have to worry if it's prograde or retrograde. But perhaps I can bring up map MFD, reference Ganymede, and target the base just to see what Transex has to say about that. PE distance to base, 5.3 inclination, okay, capture delta. Off-plane distance, off-plane distance is the one that I'm, would be most concerned about. So let's see if we can do any adjustments now. And I don't really think it matters a whole lot because we still have quite a ways to go. And with all the gravitational influences of the various moons, I don't think that we're gonna be able to get very accurate with that at this point. But we'll see what we can do here. Yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more outwards, bringing down that off-plane distance. And we'll go with that. Okay, now I'll bring up uh, burn time calculator, and we'll put in this amount of delta v. going to be 855. Translation, rotation. Get rotated nice and centered. And we'll do the burn. Rotate down a bit. Keep that X centered. A little bit of time warp. A little bit more time warp. And we're coming up to the end of the burn, so now that X is going to get real sensitive. And that is the burn. So let's go ahead, come over to view maneuver and turn maneuver mode off. And we'll see how we did. At the view encounter over here. Yeah, and the off plane distance is still showing, you know, 500 kilometers. Oh, oh. Translation, rotation, translation. With a little bit of translation, I might be able to. I bring that down. And again, I don't think it makes a lot of difference because we're so far, we're still quite a bit out from from getting there, so. Okay, I believe that's all of the things we need to take care of at the moment, so let's warp time forward. Rotation. Go to a thousand, go to ten thousand. Yeah, you can see that the uh, you know minimum altitude it's just getting pretty far out. There's just it's going to wobble in and out because there's quite a bit happening there at Jupiter. You know, there's four moons I believe in in Orbiter 2010. And we have to go forward until 58153, so we still have 20 days to go. Looks like that's going to wobble in and out, so we won't really worry about it. Let's go forward at 100,000. Be careful to keep an eye on the clock there so we don't overshoot. 
10 days to go. And we're closing them. We're three days out. Let's come back to, uh, let's go forward a little bit more. All right, now we're three days out. Let's go back to real time. And let's uh, now see what's happening here. Okay, let's go ahead and do another mid course correction. Let's bring up maneuver mode on that side, turn maneuver mode on. And I don't know which variable is going to do the best for us now, so we'll just kind of play around. Okay, it looks like positive prograde's making things worse, so let's go the other way. And that's a lot of delta V, so let's reset it and let's see what outward does. Yeah, outward's quite a bit better. Okay, so now we're down to 5,000 kilometers, so let's switch to plane change. It looks like with plane change we'll be able to bring it all the way down to the surface. And let's go to uh, draw base. We lost our base information, so let's go back to map MFD for a moment. Let's retarget the spaceport. Transex uh, does that. I'm not sure why. It just sometimes forgets that you have a base selected. Okay, off plane distance is 2,000 kilometers. Let's see what we can do to fix that. Okay, if I add, continue adding in plane change, it is bringing it down, so let's do that. Back to outward. Okay, outward's bringing down the off base. Now back to plane change. Okay, so between outward and plane change, we're getting very close to what we want. And we may have to do another adjustment yet because there's just a lot of influence happening here. Okay, so let's commit to this burn. Translation rotation. Get things rotated. time warp to speed up that rotation because it takes a while, especially in the aero freighter. And of course I rotated the wrong direction again, so we're going the long way around. I always do that. It's amazing. You'd think you would get it right at least 50% of the time, but it seems like I get it wrong 100% of the time. Okay, so we're rotated. Now let's go back to view maneuver and do an update here and just check everything out. I uh, probably don't need to worry about the variables, but let's just see what we can do. That's getting farther I guess it is getting closer to zero. Okay, let's commit to the burn. Again, we'll bring up burn time calculator just to stop, get the engines to start and stop at good times. So 54.95. And actually, before I do that, let's also just reset the date and check everything out. I guess we'll go with that.
and burning. Okay, so that burn's done. Now let's go to view maneuver. Maneuver mode off, and let's see what we have. Minimum altitude's three kilometers and going up. Off plane's negative 75, but it's, it's trending towards zero. Translate. Just doing a little bit of manual translation here. Just see if I can get our numbers a little bit better. Off plane distance is closer to zero now. Okay, let's go with that. All right, we're three days out, so let's warp time forward. We have, uh, yeah, exa almost exactly three days to go. Rotation. And when we get down to just a few hours away from Ganymede, we'll set up a uh, breaking burn. Is that Ganymede over there? No, that's Callisto. Okay, that's Ganymede here. So we're about 24 hours out, a little more than that. And here comes our moon. All right, let's go back to real time and just see if we need to do any more corrections. Uh, looks like, first of all, we'll have to go back to map MFD and target our base again. You know, Off-plane distance is all the way out to 2,000 kilometers. That's... Translation. All right, let's set up the braking. Maneuver mode on. And we need to move the date forward to that time. So we're at 5815319.05, and we need to be at 5815356.96. So let's enter and put that number in, 5696. That's when we're going to do this burn. And of course, since it's breaking, it's going to be negative prograde. <laughs> I continuously have this problem with transex just goes kaput on me. See all these, uh, see how all the variables change to one dot hash sign and then all this random stuff. I have no idea why that happens. Let me try my second instance of transex. Ganymede. View over to maneuver, maneuver mode on. Again, we'll put in that date. Let me put it in as 5695. Now let's put in our negative prograde. Now that seems to be working. Transex isn't crashing on me. And our capture delta was uh, 4,000 something. I think here. This is just happening because we currently have a, uh, I believe, a crash course with uh, Ganymede. I'm just trying to figure out which variables I need to input here. Let me think about this for a second.
actually, I am doing this in the wrong stage. I'm setting up the maneuver uh, for this would be if I was going to do this at Jupiter, and I'm not. I'm going to do. I need to do the breaking burn at Ganymede. I'm in the wrong stage. So let's go to the maneuver mode. Turn that off. Okay, we need to do the maneuver over here. And you can't do that until you're within the SOI. Um, you can't get to view maneuver. So what you have to do is come to view setup. And I believe you have to turn auto plan off. Advanced on. And then instead of plan type through point, we need plan type. I th maybe it's cruise plan. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, now we've got maneuver. Okay, so now maneuver mode on over on this side, which is the right side, and back to map MFD and retarget the base because uh, I guess it's not going to give me the base on this side. Yeah, I don't have that option for draw base. Okay, not too much of a problem, I don't guess. Let's view the encounter. I guess we can't do that. So, okay, date again 58153569696. Okay, now we'll set up the breaking burn. And on this side, we want to uh, view setup and change graph projection to focus. It makes more sense to me to see it that way. Okay, with maneuver mode on. Get in tighter around Ganymede there. So it looks like it's going to be you know 5,000 something so basically the breaking burn or the capture Delta V is about five uh, four thousand five hundred you can see now we're captured but we need obviously not just to get captured we need to get in a nice tight orbit so that's gonna be more like 5300 Okay, now let me watch these variables here. So we've got a focus PED of 2656. Or rather, the hypothetical PED, that's what I want to look at. Okay, so... So if we want to say be 20 kilometers higher, then we need 2654. 2644, that might be okay too. That's 10 kilometers. Let's go a little higher than that just to be just to be on the safe side. Something like that. Okay, now why are we not getting off base distance and all of that information? Map, reference, scan a mean. Target, scan me base. Not sure why that's not giving me the base information. We'll, we'll figure it out after we do the burn. Um, I guess let's go ahead and commit to this burn, and we'll call it the end of this part of the video because I'm coming up to 30 minutes. Let's get rotated. Rotation. Just getting the green X to move up to the position here, then I can rotate left and right. And again, I don't know which way to rotate. It always seems like I get it wrong. OK, 
Okay, that X is there. Let's kill rotate and let's rotate to the right. Put in a bit of time warp, 10X. And of course we took the scenic route. How, again, how do you get it wrong 100% of the time? It's amazing. It's like I had the same problem plugging in USB stuff. I mean, you know, every time there's a 50-50 chance of just guessing and I get it wrong every time. You know, some USB devices are more obvious and you can get them right side up, but some of them I just always get backwards. Okay, we're almost rotated. There we go. All right, now let's do some updates here. Actually, that's that burn's not for 31,000 seconds, duh. So it's a breaking burn. So, all right, let's just go ahead and end the video here because, again, I'm past 30 minutes. I'm trying to keep the videos around this time. So when we come back, we'll go ahead and finish warping time forward to get over to Ganymede uh, to complete that breaking burn. If you like this part of the video, go ahead and hit the like button, please. And if you like the content that I have here, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. That way you can be notified when new videos are posted. I also have a Facebook page. You can get the link to that down in the description below. On my Facebook page, I post all my videos, plus I post other pictures that you don't get to see here on YouTube, and I post other videos and space-related content that, again, you just can't see here on YouTube. So be sure to check that out if you're interested in that, and I'll catch you in the next part.